Hi, my name is Christine Byrne, and I've chosen to do prompt two for exam video two. Uh, the eukaryotic organism I've chosen is a ficus elastica, also known as a rubber tree. This is currently my favorite plant that I own. So the first loci we'll be looking at will be leaf shape. We'll have wide leaves, which are dominant to long leaves. The second loci will be variegation, which basically refers to different coloration throughout each leaf. We'll have unicolored, which will be dominant to multicolored. And the third loci we'll be looking at will be leaf color. So we'll have green, which will be dominant to ruby. And for the sake of this assignment, these three loci will be linked. So here we have a heterozygous organism. And because of that, it'll take on the dominant characteristics of each trait. So it'll have wide leaves, it'll be unicolor, and it'll be green. It will also be diploid, as we can see in this chromosome here. And this is what its genotype will look like, written out as a linked genotype. And here's a plotted map for the genotype of this organism. We see that the distance between leaf shape and variegation is 16.43 centimorgans, and the distance between variegation and leaf color is 9.81 centimorgans. And the co coefficient of confidence here is 0.84. So working backwards, we can discern the parent generation of the heterozygous individual. We know that that heterozygous individual received one chromosome copy from its first parent and the other from the second parent. And therefore, we are going to have two homozygous pure breeding parents. The first one will have the genotype um, big W, big U, little g, um, which will mean it'll have wide leaves, unicolor, and it'll be ruby. Um, and the second parent will have genotype little w, little u, big g, which means it'll be multicolored, it'll have long leaves, and it'll be green. So with our heterozygous rubber tree, we can then predict the possible gamete types that it would produce. There would be eight possible gamete genotypes, um, resulting in two no crossover events, two single crossover in region one events, two single crossover in region two events, and two double crossover events. The way that these genotypes are determined depends on this map here. And ultimately, these are the probabilities that we see. So then to explain the calculations a bit, um, starting with the double crossover events, we see that we would multiply region one by region two times the coefficient of confidence. Um, this is the probability that we would get for both double crossover events, but to single that out, we would have to divide that by two or multiply by one half. And here's the probability that we would get um, for the gamete genotype, big W, little u, little g. And then similarly for a single crossover in region one probability, we would take the recombination frequency of region one minus the probability of a double crossover event and get the probability of either single crossover one events. Um, but in order to single out a specific gamete genotype, we would have to multiply it by one half. And here's the probability that we would get. And here are my references.